Phipps, who was originally a gift to the city of Pittsburgh from Henry Phipps, who was one of Andrew Carnegie's partners in the steel business. For the first 100 years of Phipps' history, it was run by the city of Pittsburgh, and then steel had collapsed in the city probably about the 1980s. The city realized that it could no longer afford to maintain places like Phipps. So the nonprofit Phipps Conservatory Incorporated, which was the Friends Group, formed uh, to take over management of the conservatory. We felt if we wanted to make Phipps be a national attraction, we had to do something so that people would understand that no matter when you came to Phipps, it would be something great to see. We put a major emphasis on family programming and children's programming and education. We came up with a three-phase plan for completing all the expansions that we felt that we needed to do at the conservatory. We were talking with one of the architects. He told us about LEED certification, and we said, we care about the environment. Shouldn't our buildings reflect our values? And we decided to go for LEED certification on the new Welcome Center. I think we really put together some fabulous architects and engineers, people from Pittsburgh that were really experts in each area that we knew we needed to address. We started construction on the Visitor Center in 2003. It opened in March of 2005. Our production greenhouses opened in November of 2005, and our Tropical Forest Conservatory opened in December of 2006. When we started on the production greenhouses, we decided, well, let's make them as efficient as we can. So we selected an open-style roof. There's no greenhouse effect. The roof completely open, so there's no glass trapping heat inside. It's absolutely brilliant. I don't know why nobody ever thought of this before. And then as we started to look at our Tropical Forest Conservatory, again, we started to ask questions. How can we make this building be more efficient? And we realized in 160 years, not a whole heck of a lot has changed in conservatory design. Still big, giant glass boxes with tiny little vents at the top and tiny little vents at the bottom that rely on the chimney effect to try and get all that hot air out of the spaces. So we started to challenge our engineers with, with looking at things differently. We decided, let's make, let's make half the roof of this conservatory open up. Let's see what effect that would have. Initially, our engineers came back and said, you're crazy. You ruin the chimney effect, and we said, do a computation of fluid dynamic study. Show us how air moves through a conservatory. Show us what happened if half the roof opened up. Bottom line is, by the time we finished it, we created a greenhouse that has no greenhouse effect. In fact, it's always six to eight degrees cooler inside than it is outside, and it uses practically no energy to stay that cool. By the time we finished this conservatory, we realized that we had just built the most energy-efficient conservatory in the world. Practically zero cooling costs, very low heating costs, and electricity is made by a fuel cell. It's not even a close second. We get very excited about asking questions and trying to think about different ways of operating. Why stop with the building? We're doing this because we really think this is the right thing to do. And so that's when we started winning all these awards and being mentioned in all these magazine articles from around the country. Phipps has really gone through an amazing transformation in the last oh, 10 to 15 years. This new building is going to be the new home for our education, research, administrative offices. We're calling it the Center for Sustainable Landscapes. The Living Building Challenge is something that came out of the Cascadia chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council. And probably the best way to think about it is a, a platinum building that also is zero net energy and zero net water. In the Living Building Challenge, it's all or nothing. You have to meet all the prerequisites. So it's definitely a much higher level building from a lead platinum building at this point. Maybe that new roof could When we started the design of this building, we decided to use a totally different design process than we've used in the past. Facilitated, integrative design. Every, every workspace needs to be within 30 feet of a window. Right. I'm convinced it's the only way you can design a super high performance building. You know, this whole process has been a great learning process, not only for the staff, but also for our board, as well as the public. And one of the most exciting things to me, our board decided to change the mission of FIPS to include sustainability as an important part of our mission. And I can't tell you how excited I was when I saw that because, I mean, that's real commitment. We want all 250,000 visitors that come to Phipps each year to learn and understand what we're doing about water and energy at Phipps and go into the building and understand how the building is functioning, how it's more efficient. And we're hoping that we can inspire them to think about ways that they can make changes in their own lives as well. Phipps is an excellent example 
of the kind of transformation that's been taking place in Pittsburgh. Here you have this wonderful old relic from the last Industrial Revolution, built at a time when people thought that people were going to conquer nature, that there was no limit to the amount of resources we use or the amount of pollution we produce. And here we are, a hundred years later, and we've transformed ourselves into one of the world's greenest gardens in Pittsburgh, one of the greenest cities in the world.